Hi, I'm Patrick Murphy, AC, Sony Artisan of Imagery. I'm here to wish you a Happy New Year. Uh, this video is about the 12 things that are most common to like stop your camera from working. And it can be very frustrating when you're like in the middle of a job and all of a sudden things aren't working right or the camera freezes up or it seems unresponsive or whatever, autofocus is wonky. So I'm going to do the top 12 things that I've dealt with and I also put my head together with a couple of the Sony Pro Reps and ask them about all their experience because they field calls like this every day. Um, so I feel like we've got a good set of 12 different things. Number one, my autofocus doesn't work. Some of the lenses have switches on them. If that switch, when you pull it out of the bag, accidentally goes to manual focus, guess what? It overrides every part of the camera entirely. So you're going to lose focus, autofocus privileges for everything, no matter what. So the first thing to check is that lens. That's number one. The second thing is I hear a lot of is all of a sudden people say, oh my gosh, my eye autofocus doesn't work. Those of us that shoot a lot of portraits and shoot people, photojournalism, we rely upon IAF every day. Uh, it's such a gift. And when it doesn't work, we freak out, right? Well, actually what's often happening is people are upgrading their cameras. They're getting into a camera like the A92 or the A7R4 or even the A6100, the A6600. These cameras have tracking autofocus. When the camera is set to tracking, any of the tracking modes, it will no longer show you um, IAF. You won't see the little ball on the eyeball anymore. But when you see that square with a line on either side of it, it's, it's doing more than just IAF, but IAF is active as well as face detection and it's recognizing pattern and color. Uh, movement, all the different things, distance, all the things that the, the system does. So don't be freaked out uh, when you see the square with the two lines, the tracking symbol. Uh, that icon is telling you everything is cool. I've got this person. I know where their eyes are. I know where their face is. Everything's good. And you can... Number three, the AF point is in the corner of my viewfinder all the time. I don't know what's going on. Now, this is a pretty common problem. And what's happening is... People are carrying their cameras against their bodies like they used to with DSLRs. It's a bad idea. Look at all the buttons on the back of this camera. There's tons of them. And any of these buttons can cause you, if you bump it, it can cause... So what's happening a lot is people are walking around and they're dragging the joystick around. And guess what? It'll end up on the bottom. Now, I've got Circulate active. But if you just walk around and the camera's on... It's going to move that thing maybe someplace you don't want it to be. Um, so there's a very simple solution for this, and that is to camera, carry your camera lens behind you, camera forward. So in other words, the back of the camera is going to be always facing um, where you're going as you walk. And this is a really simple, simple, easy way to alleviate pressing all these buttons. Um, so the, uh, also that what can happen is that you can punch the trash button by accident, by rubbing on your clothing or whatever. And if you hit the trash button on many of the cameras, it will activate um, touch focus on the back screen. So if the touch focus is being touched by buttons and snaps in your camera, number one, it's probably scratching the back of the camera, which is not a good idea. But that's another problem where people are saying, man, this is driving me crazy. My camera's like putting, it's doing autofocus stuff I don't want it to do. I want it to stop. Well, stop pressing the trash button with your clothing and it'll, it'll be cool. Um, so that tip is really important. Um, you know, make sure you're carrying the camera backwards. It's just a better way to go. And it's, it's much better if you're using like a 7200 that's going to stick out. It's, you know, it'll hit doorways and all kinds of stuff. So it's, it's a better way to go. So number four, uh, the back screen went black on me. My camera was working and now it's dead. Like there's nothing happening. Um, one of the very first things to check, believe it or not, is the eye cup. Um, so this eye cup is properly mounted. This eye cup is not. And just that little bit of movement can cause the sensor to be blocked inside the EVF. And when that sensor gets blocked, guess what? It turns off everything on the back of the camera, and now it's only active in the EVF, in the viewfinder, when you look through the viewfinder. So one of the first things you should do is, when your camera goes dead, is just pull that up and then reseat it. Pretty much when you reseat that uh, eye cup, everything's going to be fine again. Uh, but this happens so often. It's a constant problem. 
Um, and it can really stop you in your tracks. It's, it's done it for me. You're like, oh my God, I'm in the middle of a job and my camera just broke and it doesn't work. Well, just check that first. Another one is number five, uh, long exposure noise reduction. Now that sounds like something that you'd want, right? If you're doing big time long exposures, remember that when you take a 30 second exposure and you have long exposure noise reduction turned on, if your original exposure is 30 seconds long, it's going to take about that long to process after it's finished taking the picture. So your camera is going to be dead for 30 seconds. It will be completely unresponsive. Same thing, the back screen is going to be dark. What's happening is the camera requires all of its power of computing to process that image for you. You've just asked it to do that. So um, if you start seeing your camera do weird things, especially if it makes multiple exposures and you're not expecting it to do that, it's probably in some mode that is requiring heavy processing. Once the camera finishes processing, it will revert back to normal, but that's, that's a common, common problem that we get calls about. Number six is relative mostly to the A6000 and the RX10 cameras. Um, in all the menus at Sony, there are the various ISOs, and the very top one is auto ISO. But on the A6000 and the RX10 models, there's one above that, and it's called uh, auto noise reduction. And if you accidentally hit that, um, what's going to happen is the camera is going to make multiple frames, and then it's going to sandwich those together. It's going to process them all together. And while it's doing that, guess what? The camera's going to be unresponsive and it'll appear to be dead. The back back will be dark and all the rest of it. So there's nothing wrong. It's just doing its work. And by the way, there's a little red light uh, on the back of the camera that will be lit red. When the camera is writing to disk or if it's processing heavily, that red light's on. So make sure you never take a battery out if that light is on or turn the camera off. I think even if you turn the camera off, the light will stay on until it's finished and then it'll shut off. But number seven, there's lines in my pictures from my flash. What's up with that? I don't like those lines. Well, those lines are um, typically because there is a, there's a feature called uh, electronic front curtain. And if this is turned on, uh, you'll see the lines, especially with Godox products, at 8,000th of a second in high-speed sync. So if you like to shoot outdoors a lot and you love doing like, you know, senior pictures or whatever in bright sunlight, this is going to be a constant issue. And a lot of people just stop at like 4,000th of a second. I find with the V862S and the 8200 that I can go to like 4,000 and there's no issue. But if I go above that, I get those lines that are across the horizontal frame. Um, all you have to do is go into the uh, custom function and uh, turn off that feature and then it won't do that anymore. So that's a pretty easy fix. Um, and that's called uh, electronic front curtain shutter. Uh, it's in menu two slash five on the A7R4, for instance. Uh, another one, my flash doesn't work. What's up with my flash? It just doesn't work at all. Like I, I'm testing it and all that. Number one, sounds dumb, but if we mostly shoot uh, available light, we're gonna be on electronic shutter. All the Sony cameras require you to be in mechanical shutter in order to trip a flash or synchronize a flash. So kind of the first thing you want to do is make sure the camera's making noise when you take a picture. If it's not making noise, you're on electronic shutter and you need to change it over. If you change it over and it's still not tripping your flash, it's probably because there's another menu that you've set wrong in the, when you set up the camera. One of the options is called wireless flash. Uh, off on. Now people use wireless flash all the time. You think, well, yeah, I want wireless flash. So they turn it on. The problem is that is only for Sony made flashes. It's not going to work for anything else. So if you're using Godox or whatever, Profoto, make sure your wireless flash setting is turned off. And then on mechanical shutter, you should have no problem. One of the things I love about the Sony products is that you can zoom on the sensor, not just with lenses. Sometimes it's really handy if you don't have a longer lens and you really need or whatever, uh, you can just zoom in the sensor. When you do that, the camera is not able to resample the APS-C that you're looking at now and make it full frame in the viewfinder. So it's going to appear to be fuzzy and out of focus. It's not a problem because the image is actually okay. So don't freak out. 
uh, when you do this punch in feature, it, it's it's going to be fine, but it's that's what's happening. That's exactly what's happening. So don't don't worry about it. Number ten, this is relevant just just to the A92. Um, occasionally you'll pick it up, and all of a sudden there's these bizarre, weird shutter speeds that you've never seen before, even with a decimal point and digits after the decimal point. And you're like, what is going on? Um, don't freak out. Your camera's not broken. Okay. What's happening is this is an anti-flicker feature. So you've probably turned on anti-flicker. Um, and what can happen is the camera can go into a mode where it will give you these decimal, these extremely precise shutter speeds. And this is designed for good reason that when you're in a, a, an area where lights are flickering really badly, what you can do is actually tune the camera's shutter speed into the best point in between the flicker. Um, it's kind of cool that Sony has done this. Uh, most people don't even know what it is, but it's a really cool feature. And so this would be like an Olympic feature. Like if you're going to go and shoot speed skating, for instance, indoors for two weeks straight, um, you know, all the trials and all the heats and everything, um, you'll have the time every day to go in and, and just experiment and figure out and test and find the sweet spot. If you tune in the camera to those exact um, place in between the flicker of the lights, you should be able to achieve slightly faster frames per second on the motor drive side. Um, remember, when you go to any flicker, Sony advertises about eight frames a second, but it really varies. And so you can actually push that up to nine or even 10 frames if you can find the sweet spot of the shutter speed. So um, I know this is probably not relevant for most of you, but if you're a heavy sports photographer and you do a lot of uh, lighting, uh, you know, you a lot of shooting in, in, in perf imperfect light. This is a really great feature. Number 11, people call me sometimes and say, Pat, there's an airplane landing in the middle of my viewfinder. What the heck's going on? Well, that's the level thing. And what's happened on the back of the camera, once again, um, at the top of the, the 12 o'clock setting, there's a little thing that says DISP, display. Um, if you just keep pushing that button, it will cycle through various different uh, displays and one of them is the level and there's other ones too. Number 12. This one's really important um, and this is the one that you hit. This is your last ditch effort to keep from sending the camera into a Sony authorized repair center. About 90% of the time this will fix the camera. Uh, let me explain. In the menu system, I'm going to turn the camera on so you can see it here. In the menu system, the very last one um, there's a one called setting reset on an a7r4 it's the suitcase menu number seven it's the last one when you press this there are actually two options and a lot of people miss the second one camera settings reset now this is supposed to take all of your custom functions out the important thing to remember is that when you press that button you are not going to reset the camera like it came out of the box it's not going to be a default setting from the manufacturer it's only going to remove some of them. And so going back to that menu, if you instead pick initialize instead, that is the out of box setting. So this one's going to wipe out most of them and change it. But this is the one you probably want. If you cannot figure out what your issue is, this is the way to go. Once you initialize the camera, you're going to have to start over and you're going to have to actually build up all of your custom settings again but it will probably fix whatever is wrong. Sometimes there's just conflict between custom functions. And sometimes we might set something up for a video and then we're using a still and, and they, they interact poorly and they all of a sudden we lose a feature that we want. And, and that's what's happening. So ultimately at the end of the day, I'm hoping that these 12 things, that some of these have helped you at least illuminate what, what was going on in your camera when it didn't do what you wanted it to do. Um, so once again, I'm Sony artisan Patrick Murphy Racy saying thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you found this useful. Appreciate you.